so we have three characteristics we have to discuss we have different types of dc motors in that we will discuss these three characteristics in that first is characteristics of the dc shunt motor so you know how dc shunt motor is working so this is the dc shunt motor armature a and a this is the dc shunt motor winding so this winding have resistance rsh it will take current ish and armature will take current armature current and it will take the voltage that means it will take the input voltage electrical supply and it will give the output you know that generally we have some idea that is shunt machine is constant flux machine constant flux machine how we can define just look at here the input supply voltage is constant and this resistance is constant so what is the constant what current in the shunt winding current in the shunt winding formula ish equal to so the voltage across this winding is nothing but this voltage the voltage applied applied across this supply voltage that is v by rsh v by rsh that means voltage is constant and uh, con this is also constant then automatically constant whenever the shunt current is constant the flux is also constant that's why it is constant flux machine the reason is flux is constant here that's why constant flux machine simply so we have the first characteristics is speed versus armature current speed versus armature current so to understand the speed characteristic we should use the speed formula that is here the speed is proportional to back emf and inversely proportional to flux inversely proportional to flux here this is the flux is the constant then speed is proportional to eb that means we can take it speed is v minus we have some armature draw okay the speed is proportional to some this draw when the armature current is increases increases from 0.2 to like that so here voltage is constant the overall this term will be decreases whenever this term is increases the overall this term will be slightly decreases so that's why the speed this is the ideal straight line this is the ideal straight line when armature current is varies from 0 and speed is generally the constant but with that flux with, with this drop we have some drop that is iara drop due to iara drop this term will be decreases the speed will be lightly decreases so this block area will be called as will be called as term so this will be speed will be slightly decreases but up to this point but you know every dc machine we have armature reaction armature reaction also we should consider armature reaction is also possible armature reaction is also effect on effect on voltage that means the speed due to the armature reaction is nothing but voltage drop we can name it as a voltage drop that means drop in the voltage drop in the voltage that means this is the due to the armature reaction we are getting something so this point is armature reaction is neglected this is the speed when the armature reaction is consider armature reaction is consider the speed speed is armature reaction is neglected this is the speed and the armature reaction is considered this is the speed speed decrement is more here speed decrement is more here okay so this is the what we can call it as the speed will be drops 
it should be straight line but speed will be drops and the speed will be drops okay so that's why it is called drooping characteristics we can name it as a drooping characteristics okay next torque versus armature current so torque versus armature current in order to get so you know torque is proportional to flux into armature current but it is a constant flux that's why the flux is constant so torque is proportional to the armature current so when the armature current increases the torque of the dc motor will be dc shunt motor will be increases so this is the characteristics that is whenever armature current increases from 0 to 0 to some rated value the torque is increases it follows the torque curve torque will be increases like this okay if again armature reaction will again affect the this point this is when armature reaction is neglected this will be the curve armature reaction again affected like this when armature reaction is neglected the torque is straight line torque will go as straight line when the armature reaction is considered torque will be straight line and it will be bend like this so this is the armature reaction consider armature reaction is considered this is the okay again armature reaction will be affect on the torque so this is also important point so generally we can name it as torque versus armature current characteristics are linear actually characteristics are linear so that means torque is varies with respect to the armature current in a linear way in a linear way okay so when the armature reaction neglected it will go straight line armature reaction consider this will be having some some uh, some linear mode some saturation mode okay right next the next characteristics are speed versus torque characteristics speed versus torque characteristics to understand this simply you know that torque flux versus armature generally torque is varies with respect to the armature yeah that means the speed versus torque is nothing but speed versus armature current both are same that means just look at there speed versus armature curve wave characteristics are this like this so here also same thing the speed versus torque is also same characteristics that means torque is generally straight line armature reaction neglected so when the armature reaction is neglects it will be like this armature reaction is considered when the armature reaction is consider so this will be waveform this will be the waveform so speed versus torque or speed versus armature current both are same because simple reason flux is constant because the simple reason is flux is the constant okay so if you observe all these characteristics this speed versus armature current torque versus armature current speed versus torque we can name it simply shunt motor is constant speed drive we can name it as the constant speed drive although it is less drop but practically it is a constant speed drive so whenever we require the constant speed applications the shunt motor is very much applicable very much applicable the reason is here the shunt motor is the having a constant flux a constant flux so by using these characteristics of the dc shunt motor we have so much applications in that fans in that fans fan is generally fan purpose also we can use to get that and it will using in centrifugal pumps 
and air air circulators and the blowers and the group drivers so these are the different different applications but practically if you look at if you look at practically the practical manner fans and centrifugal pumps and air circulators blowers group drivers almost these are single phase induction not not single phase it may be a induction motors may be the induction motors the reason is these induction motors are very much applicable and having less losses more efficient machine compared with the dc machines so that's why these are very much applications although it has these type of things okay so this is about the this is about the characteristics of the dc shunt motor so by using the characteristics only we are using for the different different applications okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you